Hello, this video is on what is larger, a Google to the Googleplex power or a Googleplex to the Google power. Uh, if you could even parse that sentence, uh, good for you, but let me see if I can tell you what I'm talking about. Most of the time people think of Google as the search engine, which is spelled G-O-O-G-L-E, but the search engine Google is actually a play on words from the number Google G-O-O-G-O-L, that's the number Google, which is defined to be one followed by a hundred zeros, some gigantic number. And a Google Plex is defined to be one followed by a Google zeros. So these are enormous numbers. The number of particles in the visible universe is about 10 to the 80th, which is one followed by 80 zeros. And a Google is one followed by a hundred zeros. So you'd need 10 to the 20th copies of the universe to have um, a Google particle. So, so, so it's some enormous number. So what's larger, a Google to the Googleplex power or a Googleplex to the Google power? Let's look at the arithmetic of this. Okay, so the question we're asking is what is larger, a Google to the Googleplex power or a Googleplex to the Google power? So the way you write that down mathematically, this is a Google, 10 to the 100, one followed by 100 zeros is a Google, and this is the Googleplex power, 10 to the Google power, versus Googleplex, which is 10 to the Google power raised to the Google power. Which one's bigger? How does this turn out? Okay, so first let's get some definitions across. Google is a search engine, the way they came up with this the name for this search engine is a play on words for the number. The number came first. Look at the spelling, G-O-O-G-O-L versus the search engine ends in L-E. Okay, and the definition of this number is one followed by 100 zeros. That's 10 to the hundredth power. And here I, I typed in all the zeros. If you count up those zeros, there's 100 of them. But this is a very big number. In fact, it's larger than the number of particles in the visible universe. There's about 10 to the 80th protons in the visible universe. So this is much larger than that. Okay, Googleplex is the definition of a Googleplex is one followed by a Google zeros. So it's 10 to the Google power, which is 10 to the power of 10 to the 100. So this is some enormous number. And if we try to write it down, we explicitly listing all the zeros since it has a Google zeros, there's only uh, 10 to the 80th particles in the universe, and we're trying to write down uh, 10 to the 100th zeros, and you, you simply can't do it. There aren't enough atoms in the universe to write it down. But you can write it down compactly like this, um, and it still means the same thing. You just can't write down all the zeros. And um, again, the company Google makes a, made a play on words of Googleplex, and when you spell it this way, Googleplex is the Google corporate headquarters in Mountain View, California. So we're not talking about the company or their building, we're talking about these numbers. So here's kind of like the intuition about how to think about it. A, a small number raised to a big number versus a big number raised to a small number. So that's the, we're kind of transposing the, the um, base and the exponent. So if the, this is kind of, you can think of this as like exponential in quotes because this is a big number and this is more like polynomial. So in general, exponentials are, exponential functions are larger than polynomial functions. So we would predict that uh, Google to the Googleplex, since a Googleplex is much bigger, would be greater than a Googleplex to the Google. And, um, and later on in the video, I will quantify uh, when this, this is true and when it's not. So let's work out the mathematics. So the left-hand side is a Google to the Googleplex power, and the right-hand side is a Googleplex to the Google power. So you'll have to remember your uh, arithmetic of e exponents. The first operation was we can just write 100 as 10 squared, and this Googleplex stays the same. But now we're, when you raise an exponent to an exponent, you just multiply the exponents. So this is 10 squared times 10 to the Google. So the rule for um, multiplying uh, exponents is you just add these exponents. So we just add two to a Google 
and that's what you get here. So this, this exponent is 10 to the Google plus two. And over here, we do the same rule. When you raise uh, an exponent to a power, you just multiply the exponents. So this is a Google times a Google and a Google times a Google. You just add these exponents, you get 10 to the 200. So now let's take the log base 10 of both sides. In other words, let's just drop the base and only look at the exponent. So we're only looking at the exponent. Yeah, so that's what we've done here. And now, now let's do that same trick again. Let's take the log base 10 again, where we're not going to look at, we're, we'll only look at the exponent, just keep the exponent. And we do that again. And here, this is a Google plus two versus 200. So all of these, the logarithm is a monotonically increasing function for positive numbers. So all of these steps are reversible. All of these steps are if and only if. So we know this bottom line is uh, true. Well, we know the left-hand side is greater than, the left-hand side is greater than the right-hand side. And all of these statements are if and only if. So therefore we can cl conclude that a Google to the Googleplex is in fact greater than a Googleplex to the Google. So now here's some details on how this works. So here's a contour plot of of uh, this function. Uh, oh, actually, this is a contour plot of um, x to the y minus y to the x equals zero. So it, it's equal zero uh, when x equals y. And you also get this weird like hyperbolic thing. And this partitions us into four regions. So this, this is basically, you know, when you have a really large x value and a smaller y value, that's why I say like, um, yeah, x is larger than y, yeah. So when it's in the exponent, it's greater, yeah. So these are the cases. And something interesting occurs right here at E. At uh, E, E, you get uh, this weird like uh, four point um, thing going on between all these different zones. So you might fool, mess around trying to solve this equation for Y. I couldn't do it. It's, I don't really know how to do it. Some crazy kind of thing. I typed it into Mathematica. It could do it. It uses the uh, product log or the Lambert's W function. And so this function is invertible. You can solve it for y. And I got this. But then when I plotted this, I, I was able to approximate it by a hyperbola, which is just basically I start with a hyperbola and then I shift it, um, shift it over to the right one and up one because you've got asymptotes here at one and one. And then I just scaled it so it went through the point EE e, and I got this. So if you remember your... Um, 10th grade uh, algebra two or whatever grade you took it in algebra two, uh, shifting functions, translating functions, you know, that, that that's very important. It's used all the time in computer graphics, like how do you translate functions? So I was able to kind of trivially come up with this and oh, that's the end of this. So let me take you into Mathematica. Now this is gonna get a little technical for you here, but here we go. Here, yeah, we're asking a contour plot of this. When do these functions e are equal? And um, we see these asymptotes at uh, x equals 1 and y equals 1. Here, if we plot this surface, um, that's what we get is this surface plot, uh, x to the y minus y to the x. And here's that as a contour plot. You get these four regions of, of which one's greater. Um, and here I'm in, I'm just zooming in around uh, E. Mathematica uses capital E. I just wanted to verify that this point here was at the coordinates E, E. So I'm just zooming in around that and you can see 2.71. Yeah, there it is. And here I asked Mathematica to solve this equation, x to the y equals y to the x, and you get this crazy thing. This product log, this is the Lambert uh, W function. This is the inverse of the function y equals x times e to the x. Um, and here's just looking at that uh, approximation. So here's the exact uh, inverse function, and here's that hyperbola thing that I just, just the hyperbola uh, scale to fit that. And so it's it does a, a really good job. Like actually, if you zoom out, there's actually um, the orange curve and the blue curve are almost on top of each other. But here, Mathematica is zooming in, and you can see that they're actually separated a little bit. And... Um, and here, what am I showing here? I'm taking this limit of this thing. Yeah, the, the asymptotic behavior of this is one. Yeah, 
it has asymptotes in one. So it's basically like a hyperbola. And that's pretty much what I wanted to say about um, this original question of what is greater, Google to the Googleplex or Googleplex to the Google. It kind of, you can think of it as this, small to the big is usually greater than big to the small. And there are some exceptions uh, near one, but if, if, this, if both numbers are bigger than E, uh, then this is always true. And then be careful. If you're, if you're around E or you're around one, then you, you better double check. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Bye.